Hey guys, I'm Luke. I'm here with Melissa Miller from Naked and Afraid, and we're going out here and doing uh, this trip to learn a few survival tips. See, I survived in the wilderness for 60 days, but I didn't really know what I was doing that well. Uh, now I'm meeting with other survivalists, and on this quest for survival knowledge, I get to learn some of the little tips and tricks that would have made this much easier for me while I'm out there. So today we're going to be covering things like foraging. So stick around and uh, watch some of the videos. They're gonna be really interesting. We'll see you guys later. Woohoo! So we were just walking and we finally found a oak tree with some good nuts falling from it. It's uh, nice. a really mature one. Nice green. And then when you, you can tell it's good because when you crack it open, you see the whole acorn nut right there. Sure, the other ones were just kind of pieces of them. Yeah, yeah they were kind of moldy. It looked like some worms got to them, but there, is your nice little acorn nut. And so right now it's gonna be pretty brittle, or pretty bitter. Yeah, like. So this one, I guess, it. did I break apart? I mangled it. Just taste <laughs> it. Taste it when you don't cook it and boil it and you'll see why you wanna. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. It's so bad, I'm sorry wow. I didn't let you. <laughs> that's why. That's why you want to cook or boil because they're really bad. Wow, that's really terrible. I know, I, can't I didn't imagine. mean to do that to you. I can't believe they're that bad. I know when you don't when you don't boil them. It's something. There's some like there's some compound in them that gives them that bitter taste. But and when you when you use heat to get rid of that, they taste really good. But right now, that's terrible. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so is it bad. worse when they're green, or? Um, they're not as this one's like almost a perfect example of a really. This one's about in peak season. If they're green, they're not fully. Okay, it's like this one's totally kind of fully greenish. ready yet. Yeah. That yeah. one needs, that one needs, you can kind of tell they're ready when they get that, that light peel brown. Yeah, right. Okay, over this them. one doesn't have that yeah, one. Yeah, this one had the green outer shell. And if they have the green outer shell, like I said, you can hold on to them. You can yeah. kind of hoard them. And, and, and this wait will take a few days to ripen. Yeah, well, it might take a, it depends on the species of yeah, that. Right. But uh, probably a week or two. Oh, so, okay. yeah. Right. It could be a week. You're going to yeah. be holding on to this one for a while. we got to pr <laughs> protect it from the squirrels. Yeah. Because right. as soon as it gets perfect, then they'll eat it, right? So, exactly. Yep. Exactly. Or so they'll grow into a tree. So you know when your acorns are ripe because they're missing and the squirrels have got them. Yes, so. because they're not even there. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Best survival tip ever. <laughs> oh, look at these. These look great. Luke, get away from the horse. <laughs> <laughs> I just smashed them all over my hand. <laughs> Okay. No, well, okay. But I wanted so, to eat those. Those look really good. I know they look delicious, but these are not edible at all. So Luke here was trying to eat some bitter sweet berries. Bitter sweet berries will cause a lot of uh, upset stomach issues going on, and you don't want to like don't don't do it. Stop. Guys, a child. But basically, there's some rules that you kind of want to follow when you're foraging. In general, just avoid berries that are red and white. It's, you know, but really you shouldn't be eating any berries or anything unless you're 100% sure, especially fungus. But oh, we, okay. that's a whole other, yeah. that's a whole other thing. Okay. And there are a lot of lookalikes. Like I'm looking up here if I can get to see, see those up there? They're really hard to see. They look just like wild grapes. Luke, do you think you can climb up that vine? Doubt it. You just learned how to do it. Okay, yeah, those look, those are commonly mistaken for wild grapes. It's called Virginia creeper. And those little purple berries are, uh, those are not safe to eat. Another beautiful, delicious looking berry that is, uh, can really make you sick. All right, so we ran across some things here. What's this? Queen Anne's lace, uh, awesome edible. Probably one of the more well-known edibles. Uh, you can fry that flower right there, or if we pull it up, you can actually eat the, you can eat the roots. Um, I kind of didn't get all the root. Now that's not going to taste as good because it's a, uh, this is an older Queen Anne's lace. So that root's going to be really, really tough. Okay. But if you just bite into it, you're going to get that, it's wild carrot basically. And you're going to get that wild carrot taste. You're oh, not yeah. going to be able no, to chew it. But I can't actually bite that one. Yeah, that both. one's going to be. <laughs> but it tastes like carrot. I can, it yeah. tastes like carrots. <laughs> <laughs> just like fowler. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking of. Um, <laughs> I need one of those shirts. Tastes like carrots. I have one. It's Do you? awesome. Yes, I rock it all the time. And so you were talking about this other stuff that looks like this. Yeah, an imposter. So Queen Anne's lace has an imposter. It's called a. It's called poison water hemlock, and um, poison water hemlock has kind of similar type uh, buds, flowers as yep. Queen Anne's lace. But the big difference is in the uh, 
is in the leaves. And um, this looks just like a carrot leaf or stem. Yes, exactly. Yep. And, and the other ones were really kind of sharp, pointy, almost like almost like uh, maple leaves, kind of with the points on them. <laughs> yeah. So they're significantly yeah. different. Sorry, I was just looking. I was like, wait, that is Queen Anne's lace, is it? <laughs> Luke's going to die when I teach him. You can also tell, like one of the easiest ways though to tell is also the like little seeds in the Queen Anne's lace too. The the, pen, the buds are always going to have, see those little black seeds? Yeah, right, okay. Too. But yeah, don't eat poison water hemlock because that will, that could kill you. That's what uh, Socrates used as his preferred method of uh, execution. He drank a poison water hemlock tea made from the roots. Wow. And yeah, so. That's a weird way to go. I, I know, yeah, right? Yeah, so I, be careful. If you're going to do any of this stuff, as far as eating these roots, or the berries, or anything, double check. Make sure you're being safe with this. It's not something to mess around with. Don't die. Yeah, that, that'd be that'd really good. We bad. don't want you to die. No. <laughs> and it's not our fault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as we laugh about the I potential know. of somebody dying. <laughs> 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 oh, uh, don't, don't die. Don't die. <laughs> but seriously. All right, what do we got here? So one of the most underrated edibles in Michigan are autumn olives. Um, they're really tart. Go ahead, give it a taste. There she goes. Go give it a taste. Let's see. <laughs> they're not quite ripe enough yet, so they're pretty oh, tart, but those, they're good. Yeah. Like you can tell that when they get a little bit more ripen. So you could actually just rip off this whole branch and take it back with you to camp and eat it as the day goes or as the mm -hmm. week goes. Because even though these ones are green and not ready yet, you can totally eat them. These also work as awesome, awesome trap bait for uh, chipmunks, squirrels, oh, sure. and, and birds. Yeah, they're not bad. Yeah, they're well, really good. They're really tart, but they're, yeah, they're really tart. But they're not seed inside. Not fully, not fully ripe yet. But you can eat the seed. Yeah. Do they get better as they as they ripen up? Get sweeter or? Yeah. Yeah, these ones are really tart. Yeah. But no, once they ripen up, they get super duper sweet. Cool. And I love them. You can make jams out of them, all that, because, you know, when you're in the wilderness, the first thing you want to do is make is a jam. Make a jam. Yep. Yeah. Oh, actually, I, I'm seeing some over here. They're, they're really, really tart. I like tart things. I yeah, like sour no. tart stuff. Try these ones. Just put them all in your mouth. Go. And just kind of eat them in the back of your mouth. <laughs> they're super sour. Hmm. It made my tongue numb. <laughs> But they're a really good source of sugar and uh, carbohydrates. Yeah. But you want to pick them early because the the birds and squirrels will like clear this out pretty quickly once they get to that right they point. Were, there was one in there. It was better than the others. Yeah, when they but, get to that really red. So mm -hmm. I would just rip off the branches and take them back and then wait as the days go. Yeah. And then pick them off. But Will they ripen on the branch further? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can take them back and um, especially if you... Like, especially if you put water at the base of the sure, stem. Yeah, but, like, there will be lots of water left in the branch that yeah. will help them ripen more. So, cool. exactly. Yummy stuff. Autumn olive. They look like honey. Don't confuse these with honeysuckles. Oh, great. Sorry, another imposter. Yeah. There's a, for pretty much every edible plant, there is an imposter and plant that's, like, poisonous. We're going to give you a sick stomach. Okay. Um, How do you tell the difference between this and honeysuckle? Honeysuckle is not quite as large as, as a shrub. And the really most notable point of these is the, do you see the berries up close? They have like that, those tiny yeah. little white dots. Yeah, they're like little speckles. Yeah, the, the, so the autumn olive little has like steel. little white speckles on them, where honeysuckle is just going to be a very solid, um, shiny red. Or, okay. Yeah. okay, so we have stumbled across some cattail. Um, this cattail is not, it's not like fully mature. But you can eat like the whole cattail plant. Really? And it's actually one of the even richest. These? Even those. Uh, I wouldn't recommend eating those. But the best part is going to be down here at the bottom and the young shoots of it. Kind of looks like heart of palm, doesn't it? It does, yeah. And I just suck on it. I like to suck out the sugars and juices from it. Um, oh, that's really dried up. Yeah, there's nothing in this it one. It tastes this terrible. It's pretty, pretty terrible. Yeah, see, survival's not always easy. Sometimes you find something and then it it's just It's not stops. in season. That's the rough thing is that <laughs> we'd run into areas, different zones where I was in, and none of this stuff was in season. Exactly. You know, and what do you do? So now you got to go to plan B and 
And then you might not have a plan B. Your plan B might be dried up cattail. No, there is a root here too, right? That you can yeah, eat? you can eat the inner The bulb? Roots. The bulb is completely edible. So when you're foraging, this is like a, we're in a nature preserve and this has just been, there's been lawn mowers and I sure. wouldn't trust the water okay, that sure. these roots are growing in. But you can, but eat, you can that eat that. Root. So the, the like flower of the cattail, the big brown part yep, that right, looks yep. like a- The fluffy thing? The fluffy thing. The cat yeah. tail? You can actually, the actual tail of the cat, yes. You can eat that and- That um, sounds terrible. <laughs> I know. It's like, I, it's, a, uh, uh. it's like you just, you just, can stir it in your water and shrink it down like a, a thick slurry. protein shake. Oh, that'd be terrible. Um, but sometimes uh, the brown part, you'll see like the, the brown cattail part, there'll be younger shoots in there too that oh, will okay. actually grow up and those are not fluffy oh. and those are Much better okay. tasting. But you can, the fluff is a good source of carbohydrates. Really? One of the richest source of carbohydrates in the plant world that you're gonna find in the wilderness. Really? So, in the fluff? And the fluff. Wow, that's amazing. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's really rough to choke down. Yeah, it'd be tough. Well, Luke, it's been real. Thank it's, you for coming out to well, the Well, thanks for doing this. This has been great. Yeah. Really a lot of fun. But there were berries we got to eat. We uh, foraged, found a lot of fun things. And uh, Melissa's going to be doing more adventures in the future, I'm sure, right? Yeah. Probably some things they got to be on up. secrets. Okay, all right. Or, on, on secrets. Yeah, on secrets, sense. yeah. Yeah, okay. they got to be on secrets. Okay, there, all right. We'll go with. You can follow <laughs> Melissa on Instagram and Facebook. At Melissa Backwoods. Okay, so. at Melissa Backwoods. I'll put a uh, link here in the description and uh, follow her on there and check out some of the things she's got going on in the future. We'll see you guys. Bye.